Divine Truth Assistance Group. Group Assistance Sessions Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action. This recording is from the Understanding God's Loving Laws Group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the Hierarchy Principles presentation, Jesus briefly summarizes God's principles of hierarchy that govern the operation of God's laws, gives examples of the way these principles are built into God's laws, and answers audience questions about the principles. Recorded on the 8th of November, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. So, as I mentioned, this talk is about hierarchy, the hierarchy principles. Now, one thing to keep in mind before we begin with this session is that without scope, hierarchy, governance, responsibility, and, uh, and compensation principles would be very, very difficult to actually create as, a, as principles and then also to create laws that function as a result of them. Scope really makes a lot of these principles that we'll be discussing in the order principles possible. So scope, in some ways, is the foundation of order. And then we're going to build on that foundation of order to have a look at the principles that control order, if you like, within the universe. Now, order is a very important thing to establish, actually. Because, it, because the opposite of order, being chaos, is, ver is quite unloving. It also, when I say quiet, it's extremely unloving. It, it also creates uncertainty, chaos does, whereas order creates certainty. And certainty and safety are very much uh, conjoined with each other. W without certainty, there really is no safety. So many of you are so afraid of whether you're safe in the universe, but the reality is that all, there's so many of God's laws and principles that have all been created specifically to make you actually be more safe. And there's a big difference between you feeling safe and actually being safe. The majority of you don't feel safe, even in your day-to-day -day interactions, even your interactions with individuals, other people, you don't feel safe. If you felt more safe, you'd probably feel more inclined to be truthful and honest and open and sharing of your personality and sharing of your desires and passions without the risk of being, you know, attacked or ridiculed or whatever. If, so you can see that many of the things you choose to do in your current life are because you're not feeling safe. But the reality is that God has created an entire system to help you feel safe. But it's because you believe in the human system and you don't believe in the God system, that you feel unsafe. So the irony is, the human definitions that we have grown up with on the planet have caused us to feel unsafe when we are actually in a safe universe. And so it's really only the human aspect that makes us feel unsafe. And even the very worst thing that can happen to you in the physical is that you die. Right? That you, and you could even be tortured to death. That might be the very worst thing you could ever think of. Right? But even that is not a permanent thing from God's perspective. That is something that you can overcome. And so this gives us a lot of uh, ability then to start considering to work through our fears and start seeing our fears as not being real. So when we come to these principles, that's what I'd like you to reflect on a bit, that order is about creating safety and security for you, as well as many other things. But the, things that the other things will, of course, be raising in these discussions. So let's look at, firstly, some terms that we're going to use. Now, we'll find in each presentation now, you'll find there are some terms that you're going to have to get used to. And, and the reason why we've done it this way is it makes the definitions or the summary a lot easier if you can understand the terms and understand how they play together. So remember, we've introduced the term of creation. So it's any c creature or creation from the smallest particle to the human soul, the highest of, all of God's creation. Now, components. This is a new term that you've not seen before. Components are creations of less complexity combined in new ways 
to form a higher creation. So, so you could say, if, remember in the uh, illustration we gave about scope, we started with water, didn't we? Or we really just started with one level below water, which was the hydrogen atom and the two of them and one oxygen atom. So, so you could say oxygen is a component, hydrogen is a component, and those two components, when combined in a certain way, make a higher creation. Does that make sense? So these are components. Now, inside of oxygen, there are subatomic particles, and they are components of the oxygen element, and so forth. So you can drill it down as far as you want, and you can put it up. As far as water is a component in the human body. It's a creation that forms a component for the human body. So that's how we're defining components. Energy includes information, energy, emotion, thought, communication, relationship or interplay within or between creation. So the forces that combine these two elements of hydrogen and oxygen are actually energy, right, that allow these two elements to communicate and co-join, conjoin under conditions. Now, some of the conditions, there are external laws governing some of these conditions, and some of these external laws might be temperature, for example. So that's something that's controlled externally to this creation. And if you get a higher and higher and higher and higher and higher temperature, you get to the point where oxygen and hydrogen must also split again. Does that make sense? So, so there is, there each, each component, if you like, has external things that affect whether its internal rules are able to be engaged under those external effects or not. And, and this is the case with every single creation. But that's the energy. The energy is the force, in this case, that attracts those two components together to form a third higher a higher creation, a single higher creation. That makes sense to everyone? Then we've got properties. So properties are the pr internal properties of this oxygen element and the internal properties of the hydrogen element and what is happening, what, what those internal properties will dictate as to how it can form relationships, for example. So, so oxygen can't form a relationship of the same kind with a human as it can with a hydrogen atom. Does that make sense? It, it can be ingested, the subsequent result can be ingested, and also oxygen itself can be ingested by the human body, but it cannot, it, it, and chemical reactions can even happen inside of the human body, which they do do, but hydrogen and oxygen have a strong affinity a much greater affinity than combining with, say, a human. So it's like things can happen inside the human, but a human soul itself can't combine with an oxygen atom, for example, because the oxygen atom, a atom is a lower form of creation and it needs to have other forms of creation at the same level as itself in order to have reactions. Does it make sense? This is why you find it might be easier for you to interact with a dog than it is for you to interact with a high oxygen atom. And a lot also, oxygen, obviously you breathe in oxygen, you breathe in gas, which, which then your lungs actually separate and allow the oxygen to enter your bloodstream. And that, and that obviously keeps you alive. But that, they, there are chemical reactions that occur inside of your body that allow that process to occur. The oxygen atom itself cannot actually interact with your whole body as, an, as a single item. It, it is ingested and it interacts with individual chemical processes at the same level as itself. Right? And this is where we get to start seeing what ha happens with hierarchy. So let's, uh, whoops, one way, whoops, one way, whoops, what am I doing? Uh, here we go, terms. So each creation's complexity 
is determined by the complexity of its individual components, energy and properties. So the complexity of H2O, water, is determined by the individual complexity of the oxygen atom and its internal rules and components, whatever the subatomic particles are that made it up, and the individual complexity of the hydrogen atom, which also has subatomic particles that are from which it was made. And the combination of the complexity of that and the complexity of that, and by the way, the oxygen atom is actually far more complex than the hydrogen atom is. It has more, as we know, it has a higher electron count. It's higher on what's called the periodic table that mankind has described. And as a result, it is actually a more complex creation, but it's the same type of creation as hydrogen in that it's elemental, which allows for combinations to occur. Hence the, the water that we see. So each creation of higher complexity has higher energy capabilities. So, so for example, um, if you have oxygen, you can, you can, uh, it, it can contain quite a lot of energy. In fact, if you compress it, um, you can actually blow a hole straight through you. That's how much, of a, how, how much strength compressed oxygen can have. Now, to do that requires quite a lot of energy, of course, to compress it. But we see that each creation in itself has an energy component. And, and then the higher creation generally has a higher energy component. And when I say generally, it's pretty much the case with all creation. The higher the creation, the higher the laws that govern it, and the higher the energy components for that particular creation. So water doesn't have to be compressed in order to have force, for example. But oxygen does need to be compressed in order to have a higher amount of force. So, so you can see that water naturally has more capable potential energy. And, and because it's made from these more elemental forces, it can actually be broken down into those elemental forces and also experience the energy of those forces as well. So the higher creation has a higher amount of energy, has higher laws governing it, and it has a capacity and potential for the higher expression of energy. Does that make sense? Yeah. If creation has higher complexity and energy capabilities, it is also then considered to be higher in hierarchy. So from God's perspective, this hierarchy principle is this substance, water, is considered to be higher in hierarchy as, it, as, it's, as a substance. Right? This substance, water, is higher in hierarchy to oxygen and hydrogen by themselves. And it has higher laws that govern it. In other words, there are more laws that govern it. And those laws are higher in nature in the sense that they have more power as well. Right. Does that make sense to everyone? So when we get to see the, then we get to see the inbuilt rules. Remember, we were induced, introduced to inbuilt rules in scope. So the inbuilt rules means a set of laws and potentials built into the creation. So oxygen has a set of inbuilt rules, hydrogen has a set of inbuilt rules, but when they are combined, they form this third element, which now has a new set of inbuilt rules, but it can also be destroyed back to its original components and therefore back to its original rules. Right. But when it forms a new component or a new a new substance, it has a new set of inbuilt rules now. And that is considered to be a higher law. There are also, uh, with regard to external rules, uh, external rules we saw means a set of laws and potentials created by creation combinations. So temperature is an external rule. Temperature has energetic and uh, material associated with it in terms of its generation and it is an external rule applied upon the substance. So this is an internal, the substance that we're looking at, temperature is one of the external rules that governs what happens to this substance now. The rule set is any set of 
inbuilt or external rules. So we want to use the term rule set, and rule set and law is really sort of interchangeable, in, if you think of it. Because rule set, rule set, though, is the combination of and the interaction between the inbuilt and external rules. Right? Law is an individual set of laws or individual rule sets. <laughs> We're starting to get a bit too out of hand now, but each more complex creation has more complex inbuilt rules and more complex inbuilt rules interact with more complex external rules, therefore creating more complex laws. Does that make sense? So you can see it, it starts very, very basic and then it, start, it rapidly becomes due to the more complex... So, so you could say that each individual component, so this is a component of water and this is a component of water. But then we create water, which itself is also a component of higher structures. Right, so we've got many other higher structures that can be involved with water in the human body. There's so many of them. In fact, every single one of your inbuilt systems pretty much has water in it. So therefore, every single one of your inbuilt systems, cardiovascular, cell cellular systems, um, your uh, nervous in the system, the way your brain works and everything, all based upon water. It needs water in order to function. And so therefore, water becomes a component used in all of those higher, higher creations. All of, and those higher creations all, because of they combine many other processes and chemical reactions, they are higher in their hierarchy. As, as, uh, as higher than water is in the hierarchy. So you get this effect, really, that the lower things are in the hierarchy, the more essential they become for all creation. Because there's more of them, obviously, in each creation. But the higher the creation is, the higher the hierarchy, because it's combining these elements and functions in different ways and in more complex ways, the higher the creation, the higher the creation's power the higher the creation's energy potential, the higher creation, the higher creation has much more ability to control these lower, lower creations. So your body at the moment is actually controlling billions of lower creations. Even that's without you even doing anything. You're just sitting there doing nothing. It's already controlling billions of lower creations, some of which are alive and some of which are just materials, some of which are living materials, is all getting processed by your body at any one time. Now, I think, um, I'm not sure, but I think you know, from memory that the amount of uh, cells in your body, I think it's something like, I think, I think you'd fill a few pages of zeros with, with a one in front of it in terms of, the, I think it's one by 10 to the 60 or something like that, the amount of cells in your body, um, which is billions by billions by billions by billions by billions. So if you think about that, that a cell is also has many elements that, that are used to construct a cell, then obviously there's literally billions of laws already being governed and appropriately used just within your body. It's remarkable you survive, right? <laughs> given how many necessary processes, billions of them, there are that need to function for your very survival. And you can see that if God didn't create things in this manner, everything would be very unpredictable as well, which, which obviously would be against the prospect of survival. So now we come to some kind of context for the hierarchy principle, which is, Scope determines the existence of everything in the universe. Remember this principle that we said, adding together, creating the higher, the higher creation we're calling it now. But, but in scope, we didn't call it that. We just called it a more complex creation. Scope is what allows this combination process to continue right up to the development of the human soul itself, the highest or the pinnacle of God's creations. Scope allows... The, is the context through which hierarchy can exist. So as we're saying here, scope determines 
everything within the universe, how everything communicates with all elements in the universe and also the inbuilt soul-based mechanisms via which the highest creation in the universe is able to communicate with God, even. Scope determines all that. Hierarchy, though, determines the position or the place in the universe in terms of a hierarchical system. So hierarchy adds to scope. Scope allows for creation of more and more and more and more complex life forms. And when I say life forms, I'm even referring to matter as being a life form there. Whereas hierarchy allows us to determine which life form has the same level of hierarchy as another life form. So, so now we come up with the term that mankind is now called species and things like that, where you, or, or elements in this case, is a, in a lower, you could think of that as a lower example of it. For, so, for example, all elements, all elements have a, this, are the same level in hierarchy, with one exception in that when the element is more complicated, it is slightly higher in hierarchy than an element that is less complicated. But only elements can combine with elements. Now, if you go higher up into um, the hierarchy, if an if a animal is of a species, it has a certain, and we're talking now about maybe a mammal, if it's a mammal, then it's very high in hierarchy from a human perspective. The human body, from a physical perspective, is the highest in hierarchy, highest in complexity of the physical universe. And underneath that is the next highest, which are mammals. Now, some mammals are less complicated or more complicated than other mammals, and, and they have a different set of genetic structures, which means then there is a limitation to how they can commingle, how they can reproduce. They can only reproduce with animals or mammals of the same type. Does that make sense? So, but they are high in hierarchy because they have billions, literally billions of systems which have needed to be combined in order to create that particular animal, a mammal. Much less than, say, a single-celled bacteria or some kind of virus or something like that. Those kind of creations, which are still living, have much lower hierarchy. And they can only combine chemically or with processes inside of other things. They can't actually combine with the whole thing itself. So here we have this concept of hierarchy now, which is basically this. Hierarchy determines the hierarchy of law by the complexity of each law. So what that means is that the more complex the law, the more higher it is considered to be. Huh? Hierarchy also determines the complexity of creation by the hierarchy. The hierarchy is determined by the complexity. So the more complex the creation, we saw example here, the more complex the creation, it is considered to be higher and therefore have higher laws governing it. So this ensures more complex creation is governed by more complex laws. You imagine if you were only governed by the same laws that oxygen had. You know, your life actually would be completely unsustainable under that circumstance if you were governed by the same law as oxygen. But because of this additional complexity, creating new laws, you now, as the pinnacle of God's creation, even your physical body, is governed by a set of laws that mean that it's now very stringent controls over what you're capable of doing. You can't combine with oxygen. You can't, there can't be in your... There can be chemical processes inside of your body that do it, but you yourself, as the whole being, the whole person, the whole body, can't combine with an oxygen atom. You just can't. Right? And, it, and, it's complete, and, and it's limited, because imagine if that was possible, all of a sudden you, 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 the person would pop out of the womb if this was possible, and all of a sudden their whole body would start decomposing immediately into all these different elemental forms. Can you see? That's what would happen if, that, if this rule wasn't applied. So hierarchy ensures the sustainability 
and the ability to survive of higher creations. Otherwise, the higher creations would automatically decompose back into their lowest forms. Does that make sense? Okay. So it ensures higher creations and laws exert more power as well and have more energy and therefore more complex properties as well. So the higher the creation, it has higher energy, higher power, more complex properties. Now the beauty of that is that you can create higher, more and more complex creations through this process. How are we going with that? Is this making sense to you? Yeah. yeah? Okay. And you can see that external forces, such as, for example, temperature, are actually made from a combination of lower components to create that particular thing. And that is the case with pretty much all creation. All external forces are really the amalgamation of lower components and those external forces, depending on how large they are, can now affect the individual component. And depends on how much energy the external force has, depends on its, what you would call it, its properties, will determine what happens now with this component, the creation that we're looking at. And so some external components, external rule sets, if you like, um, can actually have a huge effect on lots and lots of different things, can't they? Like temperature does have an effect on every single creation on this planet. Yeah. And the reason why is temperature is maintained by a huge amount of systems, but, but, but it, because it affects the atmosphere that you in fact are surviving in on a physical level, it now will have an impact on you. Unless you can prevent it. Unless you could create some kind of suit that has a sustained environment of its own and, and if it was 300 degrees outside you still will survive or minus 200 outside you still will survive and that's what they've had to do with regard to making space suits for astronauts. They've had to allow them to survive further, bigger extremes knowing that we have, our body has a range of temperature and it's natural condition that we can tolerate and beyond that point we are dying or, or dead depending how instant that process is. But temperature itself is another quite high creation because it is based on many, many lower things inclu including the need for things like atmospheres and other things like that and also the transmission of f energy from suns in this case you know, determines the temperature. So, and, and in fact, that if there was no atmosphere here on Earth, then uh, we would all be at the normal temperature of whatever the universe is, which is pretty close to Kelvin somewhere. I'm not sure exactly what the temperature is off the top of my head, but, but you'd all freeze instantly, basically, if that was the case. But because we now have atmosphere, which was formed by gravity and other elements, which, is, which means gravity is actually quite a high law in the hierarchy of laws. Does that make sense? In the hierarchy of physical laws. It's not high from a spiritual or soul-based perspective, obviously. Yep. So there we have it, where we have our hierarchy principles. Uh, it's a very, very important principle to understand on a lot of levels because the higher, once you understand the higher laws, you can often circumnavigate or, or act as if other lower laws almost don't exist. Of course, they still exist. They are just being overcome by the higher law. So in this case, the law governing oxygen still exists and the law governing hydrogen still exists, but the law governing water supersedes these laws or is higher than these laws and therefore, while these the elements are combined, this law will remain in force. But as soon as you separate the elements that combine to make water, you will now be reverted back to the lower laws. Does that make sense? Hence, a hierarchy of law. So, you know, we've seen the example of gravity. It's actually a combination of creations and laws, creating a new law that we 
sum total together and call gravity. That's all it really is. And the same goes, you know, in this case, the greater the mass, the greater of gravitational force exerted on matter. So the bigger the mass, the more force it exerts, but it's still the same principle. You actually have a gravitational field. You have one, and the Earth has one. Yours is a lot smaller than the Earth because you are a much lower mass. So this creates a law that maintains automatic safety in the environment for sustained life and development. So you can see here how the order principles, safety, creating safety and security in the environment. If the order principle, and particularly the hierarchy principle, didn't exist, as I said, your body would be completely dissolved back into its elemental parts. The instant it was created, it would be instantly dissolved. Okay, so we've seen aerodynamics, it's actually the same. A combination of creations, laws, rule sets, creating a new law we call aerodynamics. And again, it involves many lower laws from a wide range of fields, including physics of motion, material properties, fluid dynamics, pressures, temperatures, and all these different laws. So, so actually it's quite a high physical law. Can you see that? It's quite a high physical law because it has so many parts to it, so many things, so many creations combine to make aerodynamics possible. And therefore it's quite a high law physic from a physical perspective. We've looked at the human body, so remember this discussion was a, was a subset of what was happening with the human body and, ox and water goes into other systems, you know, digestive system, all the chemical processes, the chemical processing system, if you like. We can have the central nervous system and so forth. And, and the way energy functions, uh, needs water as well in your body, so all of the energy, other energy systems in the body. Um, even your muscles, so you could have your, or your muscular system. These are all systems that require water. Every one of those systems is considered to be higher in hierarchy because they have more complex laws governing them. And while that system exists, they overcome or control the law of the lower, that's lower in hierarchy. Make sense to everyone? Okay. Now the human soul is interesting because you've got connections now so if you have a body the physical body and you have the spirit body and the way it should really be drawn um, is overshadowing the physical body there's the spirit body and the reason why it should be drawn that way really is because they one is overshadowing or overcloaking the other so that's the spirit body and then, of course, the soul, the way that should be drawn is it, and this is, uh, if we get a bit more complicated here, where's my rubber gone? It's not connected here. Where's it gone, guys? Any ideas? Am I not seeing it? No. <coughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we draw the... Uh, if we draw the feminine side of it, we'll draw it like this. And again, with the spirit body, overcloaking the feminine side. So, like this. Okay. And the whole soul, we would have to draw like this. Wouldn't we? Overcloaking both of those bodies. That's really how it is. Yeah. So right now, that's how that's you. You're just not aware of that, but it's you, right? Remember the demarcation, the aware awareness is what's causing you to not be aware, but the reality is that is you at the moment. That's a single soul, has two bodies, two spirit bodies attached to it, but it's actually, if we drew it properly, that's how it is. The soul encompasses the bodies. It's not separate to the bodies. And it actually lives in a different dimensional universe, encompassing those bodies. Because universes also 
ecocentric, they exist within one another as well. But we'll get to that later. Uh, now, you can see the, the, that the physical form obviously is a lower creation than the spirit form, and that's a lower creation than the half of the soul, you know, of, from which the whole soul, of course, it's really a whole soul governing these bodies. So they're all lower step ups in creation, therefore, step up in abilities, step up in the laws governing them in the complexity of the laws governing a step up every time and w when you talk about the complexity of the soul as i've said the, the soul actually is so complicated that it can't even fit in the physical universe it fits in the next universe but later you'll see there's a hierarchy of universes and it actually fits in the next universe it won't uh, the soul can't actually fit in the physical universe, that's how complicated it is. Right? The spirit body and physical bodies fit in this universe, but the dimensional, this has to be a new dimensional space creating, this, this soul is so complicated that it needed a new dimensional space for its existence. Right? That is not a part of this universe. Mm. Interesting, huh? Hmm. Yeah, so the human soul obviously has energetic systems that allow for it to overcome even and control even the laws in this universe. It's actually, the human soul is actually more complicated than the universe, the physical universe itself. This, this layer of the universe. Remember there's, uh, as you'll learn later, as you've seen in your notes, there are layers of physical, there is layers of universes, each one more complicated than the previous as well. And the soul requires the next level of, of, of it, it can only exist in the next level of complication, if you like. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, now because of that, this... It is this soul that is being created that allows for energy transference between itself and God. It's not these bodies. These bodies are only capable of energy transference between each other and between anything that is physically associated with the body. So, so for example, in the physical world, your physical body in, can interact with other physical things, right? But and it's controlled by the spirit body. But the spirit body, when the physical body is no longer there, only interacts in the spirit world. But when the physical body is there, the sp phys spirit body still controls the physical body as well as all of the physical and spiritual interactions. Right? Because there's a hierarchy, again, of bodies with regard to these things. Now... It's interesting that mammals, the next lowest form of creation from God's perspective, is it, they are the next lowest in complexity to the human body and human soul, human spirit body creation. They don't exist where the soul exists. There are no animals in the next universe because they are too simple to exist in that universe. You need a highly complex soul to exist in that universe. It's only the soul that receives substances from God. These bodies receive substances from the soul. Right? So the soul maintains their life. The soul maintains their development. The soul controls, in fact, both the life and development of both bodies, the spirit and the physical bodies. Yeah. Natalie, you would like to ask? So does that mean then that the spirit world actually exists in the physical universe as well? Yes. Okay. Yes. So all the spheres of the spirit world right up to the union state, the, the level that's one lower than the union state, are actually in this universe, this physical universe. So you could call it metaphysical. It's just in a different, this different form of, um, of matter, but it still is matter that exists in the physical Thanks. Yep. Makes sense?
So the spirit body um, is just a physical creation, just like the physical body is a physical creation. Just a different type of matter with different elemental combinations and therefore different properties. Yet more complex in nature to the body, the human physical body. Ask again. But it's the soul that governs those two bodies, controls yes. those two bodies. Controls and governs. And governs, okay. Yeah. yeah. The soul, the soul um, you'll learn that being the highest creation, obviously it is the highest in responsibility, the highest in governance, the highest in, in even the compensatory effects are all highest with regard to the soul as well. So everything, because the soul is the highest of God's creations, it therefore is the highest thing in terms of governing everything else, including all matter in the physical and, and spiritual unit. You know, the spir spiritual and physical spheres that we have now contained within the one physical universe are all governed by a soul and, and potentially can be all governed by one soul. Uh, that's depending pretty, on its that's strength. That's pretty mind-blowing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Pretty interesting way God's created everything. Now, just going to keep an eye on my time. I'm pretty good still. That's good. So I might just have to sk skip to the conclusion and then we'll do some Q&A about this, eh? Because obviously you'll have a few questions. So let's have a look at the conclusion. So hierarchy determines the position or place of each creation and law within the universe. That's what it does. It creates implied, instinctual or automatic governance. You can see why. Because the next highest creation obviously now is governed by a higher set of laws and those higher set of laws in that higher creation then govern its constituent parts. So it's like an automatic governance system. It's not governance based on somebody's free will, but governance based on the fact that it's just automatic. It's just built into the system. Yeah. So your body, physical body now I'm talking about, governs billions and billions of systems. And it does it automatically. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to you know, work out what's going on. You do have at the soul level control over it though, if you so exercise. Right? But most people forget that they have control of course and then they don't exercise that control. But the reality is your physical form has huge amount of systems that are governing huge like this billions and billions of lower creations and it governs it seamlessly and remember because of the economy and function principles governs them automatically so you don't have to manage the maintenance of your body so you don't have to de determine when a, se a skin cell sheds itself or, or what happens when you injure yourself the automatic repairing process you don't have to govern that you can govern it at the soul level by the way but you don't have to, and it will still naturally occur. Your soul automatically governs how rapidly it occurs and why it occurs and all these other things, but because most of us are unconscious at that level, we don't have control over it. It's just an automated function. But you can imagine once you have control over it, how much power you will be able to experience even over your own body. So it, 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 if you start thinking about it, it starts opening up some possibilities, doesn't it? inside of your mind even about what you may finish up having control over even in your physical body right. but again it's all because of these principles hierarchy extends scope by placing scope within hierarchy and scope really allows for hierarchy to exist so it's important to see the relationship between these two types of of principles if you like now there is an immense amount of love and and scientific fact or truth, which is God's principle of truth, involved in this principle, obviously. And you think about if, if God didn't do these things, how, how your life would even be impossible to maintain without, without these principles existing. So there's an immense amount of love involved in these principles and an immense amount of truths. As you can see from your human body, humankind have yet to even scratch the surface about the human, how the human body works. And that's because 
the human body is the highest of all physical creations and therefore the most complex of all of the possible systems. Uh, I feel that we're going to be, you know, thousands of years time, millions of years time potentially, still trying to discover how the human body works, even though it's a finite creation. Because it has so many billions of systems, all of which are interacting through law, inbuilt in it. Okay, now what do we do with these principles? Well, we're pr pr often against them. So firstly, we believe I individually and humans collectively don't have control over our own creations. Now, this hierarchy thing says you do. <laughs> you have direct control over everything that's going on within your body, external to your body that you've created. You have direct control over all of these things. So, so you know, this whole concept that, oh, sin is uh, like, I don't have control over sin. No, you do. You can choose to sin or choose not to. Right? You have direct control over it. That's, an, that's a creation of, a, of the human, and you have direct control over it. So stop assuming that you don't have direct control. You, you know, diseases in your body. Most humans go, oh, I don't have control over it. I can't, I can't repair that. I can't fix that. Yes, you can. You have direct control over it. God's designed it that way. Any disease you have, you have direct control over it. In fact, any disease you have, you've caused because you have direct control over it. Does that make sense? Even old age you've caused because you have direct control over it. The whole concept of getting older and more wrinkly and you know, graying and all that, we, we control that. We cause it through different things that are out of harmony with love. Believing I can circumvent or are more powerful than the laws that govern me. <laughs> that's, that's something that's very interesting. If laws govern you, how are you going to be more powerful than them? You can't. So give up this concept that you can uh, somehow negotiate with these laws that control you. You're far better off learning about them. And, and I, again, I find it interesting on a physical level we do that. So, so humankind learnt the law of gravity, for example, and then they learnt the law of aerodynamics, and they didn't have any emotional thing going on, oh, I just want to somehow get rid of this law. No, they learnt about it, and they learnt about how to use it, and they also learnt to how to overcome it with a higher law. That, that's what we chose to do at the physical level. But what we keep avoiding doing at the soul level is the same thing. Right? So this is a big problem we have. Um, now, is that, was that all the ones? I think I had more in my list. Yeah, I did have a lot more in my list on the screen, I think. No, that's, oh, I was pretty lazy, that, <laughs> <laughs> that outline, wasn't I? There was obviously millions more <laughs> we could have added, but I was a bit lazy there, and I must have been tired that day. So, so what we want to do now, perhaps, is uh, we'll just do a quick Q&A about that material. It'll be, uh, we'll have about a half an hour. Now, you've already given me many questions, but what we'll do is we'll allow Lena and I to, t to change, uh, change our screens now. Just be a minute, and then we'll get on the Q&A. So, the discussion we're going to have now is the Hierarchy Principles Q&A. We're going to start with Dave, uh, David Roseman up the back there. So, thanks, Dave. Well. Your first question, if you can. Okay. So as our soul grows and transforms with God's laws, we become more complex creations. Do we have greater impact on untransformed souls? Yes, of course we do. So, so there's a principle involved in hierarchy that is the, the more of God that you actually absorb within your soul, of course that makes you an even higher creation again. Naturally, that higher creation has much more control and influence over every other creation as a result. The other thing, though, that happens uh, in, in the planet is that many of us give up our will and desire to others. So we see this happening all the time. Where, so, so you actually all have the same... If you're in the same developmental condition, you all have the same amount of energy and you all have the same amount of potentiality in that condition. But what happens is if you have individual emotional injuries which cause you to abdicate your will or, or give away your will to somebody else, what happens is that you are actually giving them your power. Right? And in the process of giving them your power, they become more powerful. So this is how like dictators on the planet have 
gotten to rule by a lot of different people giving them the power to rule. So we can't say that a dictator like, say, Hitler or Stalin or those kind of people who've been very, very damaging to humanity throughout history, you can't say that those people came on their own accord. They had to be given power by somebody. Right? So you, as a human soul, have the ability to choose to give away your power. To choose to... In, and remember, power is energy. So you're choosing to give away your energy. And remember, we talked about energy, if we just go to the energy component. We talked about energy as any emotion, thought, communication or relationship or interplay. So, so you... With, with regard to someone like Hitler, people chose to support him, chose to talk about him, chose to, to enjoy his concepts or ideals, chose to in, in emotionally accept what he was saying because they had emotional injuries of their own which allowed that acceptance. And in the process, they finished up giving him greater power even though he has had less developmental power of his own. Does that make sense? So here we see a contrast between a soul that develops by receiving God's love actually has more power, actually has more developmental power, therefore actually does have more effect over all of creation. But, but a soul can be of the same power as you and you give away your power to them through some, because of some injury that you may have. You give away that power. That's an imaginary power on their behalf. If all of us just stopped giving our power to them, immediately they would have none. Does that make sense? So, so this is where we've got to be careful because, and see the power of our own will not being exercised. So when you choose to not exercise your will in a loving or truthful way, you are automatically giving away power to the people who are choosing to exercise their will in an unloving manner. Just by your lack of action, you are actually supporting people who are actually in a darker condition. You're automatically supporting them. And to, when we get to compensation, you'll realise there's actually a penalty for that, giving away your will to somebody in a darker condition. Now, I see this happening all the time, where people give away their will to people in darker condition and we see it happening historically in humanity through through dictators and other leaderships like that where their will people just give away their will because of fear generally or other addictions that they have they give away their will and unfortunately that means that one person seemingly has more power but actually their soul doesn't have more power you just gave it to them you just gave your power to them yeah so does that show the com contrast Dave, like yeah, you see thanks. the contrast between the God's laws transforming the soul. So remember, whenever God's love, so if this is the whole soul, you've got God's love entering the soul, right? That, of course, is going to make that soul a higher creation because a part of God is now in that creation. Therefore, from God's perspective, that soul is higher in hierarchy than other souls as a subsequent result of receiving that love. It doesn't mean that God doesn't view it as equal in terms of equality or other aspects, but it is higher in hierarchy. It has more power of governance as a result. Does that make sense? It does. As a natural result of it having received some of God's love. But that's not the same as humans collectively getting a tiny little soul, another person's tiny little soul, and a heap of tiny little souls on humans that are undeveloped here on earth all give their power to that soul. That doesn't automatically make that soul that powerful. It doesn't. All it does is the individual power of each of those smaller souls, in terms of power, have all, has all been collectively collated and aimed towards one person. And that's a completely different process. Uh, and that's the process we have happening on Earth, generally. Yeah. So the reality is you can have one person on Earth in that condition, and you can have one person on earth in that condition and seemingly he has more power. But he actually doesn't. He only has more power because all those people gave away theirs to support his decision of taking power. Yeah? Does that help, mate? It does. Yep. Thanks.
G'day. Let's, uh, if we can bring that mic now down to David R. But let's go across to Louise. Now, I'm in the interested, Louise. Uh, now, where is you? Yeah, in your first question. Yes, question. Yeah. Um, why does the why does only the human soul have free will? No, it's not that one. That's your oh, second question oh, here. Your first question why, was why, about God. Why does God not want the human soul to become as powerful or as wise or as loving as he or she is? God does want that, but it actually is not a physical possibility. So God, God's trying to help us grow and grow and approach God's nature and go, God's infinite nature. But the human soul can never become infinite. It's actually a physical impossibility for the human soul to become infinite. Does that make sense? Now remember, if you examine some principles here of sort of mass and science, just very basic principles of infinity, we see that if, if this thing here is the infinite, and this thing here is growing towards the infinite, can you see it can never really be infinite because this thing is infinite. This thing is the thing taking up all space. So this has to be growing inside of it. There's no other option. Do you see? So, so God does want us to grow and become more powerful, more wise, more loving and, and closer to where God is. But at the end of the day, it is actually physical impossibility for us to be the same as God is. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. The principles of infinity mean that it's impossible. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Which is, by the way, we could have added the principles of infinity to our list of principles, couldn't we? And discussed them. But, but we thought with the principles of infinity, you'll get a bit of a flavour of it all the way through our discussion because God is an infinite being. So we decided not to include the principle of infinity in our, infin in our principles discussions. Does that make sense? But it is an actual principle that has governing factors and governing laws. So it's not just his desire, it's the principle that he's in infinite. Yeah, the principle yeah. of infinity is that if something is infinite, it is already... It is and will remain the biggest possible thing in the universe. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And nothing else is ever going to get to be the same as it. Yep. Okay, David Ryan, thanks. Um, is creation divided into groups or is it a long list where one creation is above or below another until the human soul is at the top? Yes, so yes, creations are divided into groups and you can see why from our diagram, can't you really? It's like the digestive system of my, my, of my digestive system is equal in its capacity and power to your digestive system depending upon whether our souls have any limitation placed upon that system. So, so you could say my digestive system and your digestive system are identical in their power. Does it make sense? In your physical body I'm talking about. Yep. yep. Now, if my soul receives some of God's love, now my digestive system and your digestive system are no longer going to be equal in their power. Does that make sense? So because I've received some divine love, therefore I have more energy, external energy being supplied into the system, therefore the power of the actual system is going to grow. So like with the animals, you know, mammals are grouped together, our stomachs are grouped together, but with the soul affecting with, say, our body, when it develops, then also everything underneath it that's connected to it develops up with it. Correct. Okay. Correct. Has a subsequent result. But there are groups, just like you've said, there's groups of obviously species of groups where certain things can, can interact with other things, but that again is controlled because of the similarities they have with regard to their systems. Mm. So the reason why a human system can't interact with an animal system in terms of, uh, in terms of um, reprodu reproduction is because at the end of the day, the two genetic structures are completely different and therefore the laws are completely different governing the splicing of the genetic structures when the sperm and the egg get together. So naturally the two systems can't interact with each other ever. Does that make sense? So is there an infinite amount of hierarchies within hierarchies kind of thing, like there's a group of hierarchies? Well, given the infinity principle, yeah. that is possible, is it not? Yes. Thank and you. in fact, uh, if you start looking at the complexity of the human soul, um, I'm quite sure that it will find in the end, a hu you know, there'll be a, a, it, while it's a finite being, mm. there will be... Um, almost an infinite m a number of things that you that are combining to form it 
Mm. Yeah. So this is why um, the human soul, of course, is one of the is the most you know complex creation. Mm. It's it's different to uh, physical universe itself because obviously these are much less complex creations with less systems that govern them. Uh, even though the matter might be larger, the systems governing them are far less complicated, and therefore they are less in hierarchy from God's perspective. Yeah. But you're right, there are groups, and those groups interact with each other and are controlled by external rule sets, which are also controlled by external creations to the group. Mm -hmm. So the human soul is one of those groups that has the ability to control all other groups. So when all of us get together and we all decide to eat meat, we're having a huge effect on the planet with regard to the other groups of lower life forms yeah. just by that one decision, one collective decision. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see that uh, in the world around you, can't you? So any, any time a humans make a collective decision and, and an, a substantial number of humans actually agree on that decision, huge things happen. Some good and some bad. You know, sometimes there's good things that happen as a result of that. That's the whole concept of the, you know, the whole internet revolution with regard to positive things happening on the internet. Is you know, eventually it gets to the state where more enough enough humans all agree, and bang, it just goes wild, wildfire after that. Yeah. And that's again the collective condition of the human being imposed upon lower creations. Yeah. You see all of these things playing out in all aspects of of life you know it's, it's remarkable when you see when you understand the understand understand the basic principles you see them playing out all the time everywhere yeah good question thank you um anna s could we have anna s um, if we can have your first two questions that you've given me anna s uh anna Skivik. Yeah, oh, sorry, this is regarding hierarchy principles. The first one, you, you got them? I think you have answered that one, but is it the, what is the difference between rule set and law? Yeah, I have answered it, but I want to answer more. So. Oh, I see. Okay, what is the difference between Gee, rule set and yeah, law? Right. <laughs> you're being disobedient. But anyway, yeah. what, what is the difference between a rule set and a law? No, they're basically the same thing. However, a rule set can be a combination of billions of laws. So, so a law can be a combination of billions of laws, just like the law of gravity, or the laws governing your body and how it functions in the central nervous system. Billions and millions of laws there involved in how that functions. So a rule set is the same. You could think, can it consider, it, consider it to be the same. Now, don't get too hung up either on the definitions. These are just definitions to help you understand. They're not definitions we would use in the spirit world to describe these processes. They are just things we're trying to use that we have available in language to describe what, what's going on, really. Now, your second question. Um, is there a synonym for the word scope? Yep. Yes, continue your question. Uh, the translation in my dictionary does not seem to fit in the context we're talking about here. Um, it says uh, extent and reach. That's exactly what scope is. Ah. Yeah. Extend and reach. That's why we use the term. Okay. Yep. They do fit, and, and if you don't think they fit, then you're not understanding scope yet. Mm. Does that make sense? Yep. But those two definitions, extent and reach, certainly do define scope. Thank you very much. All right. And Anna Nainans. Uh, where are you? Thanks, Anna. And Jane, where are you? And Jane will be afterwards. Hannah. Uh, my question was about how is hierarchy, how does hierarchy reveal that God feels relationships are important and bring satisfaction of desires? And how does hierarchy reveal that God feels that the common purpose brings more powerful beneficial results yeah so this is a good question remember we said in the reveals section that it reveals a number of things about god and and some of you may have been quite concerned you know quite confused about 
How does it reveal that? How does it reveal that? Well, well, this is a good question to illustrate that. So, so for example, hierarchy principles reveal that God feels relationships are important. Can you see that the very structure of hierarchy and scope is that we are combining elemental systems to build a new system? Right? The fact that these systems can be combined demonstrates that God would like things to go together, does it not? That God wants things to join. And in the process of the joining, the next highest thing is created. So in other words, there's an outcome that was more positive than the constituent parts of its lower creations were by themselves able to create. So, so the beauty of this is it tells us a lot about God's nature that he wants things to combine and to cooperate in order to form higher creatures or higher creations and therefore more powerful circumstances. He wants that to happen. Right? And this gives you some uh, uh, illustration about the hum human condition. You see, what we notice on Earth, of course, is that we have a lot of humans, all of which are pretty much at a similar or the same condition. And what happens there is they often have complete disagreement as to what they will achieve or accomplish or desire to do. Right? And we particularly see this in relationships. Right? This is why relationships end up with fights in the long run. Because at the end of the day, we've got two equal parties, from God's perspective in the hierarchy, not being able to cooperate, not being able to join in a common purpose. Right? As a result of that, the next highest thing cannot be created. You follow? Right? So, so this is an illustration of how God, is a, through this process, is, a, is demonstrating that he wants things to be of the same nature, that have the same nature, the same kind of, if you like, point in the hierarchy. He wants them to m cooperate together because if they do, the next highest thing can be made. Right? But if they don't, then that is not possible. Isn't that true? Yeah, the next highest thing is not possible. So this is an illustration how God feels relationships are important. Even relationships between low creations are important to God. He created them so they have relationships and can create. Uh, and the beauty of them is they create a large variety of different things. So, so for example, hydrogen and oxygen, uh, if, if they're the two lower forms of creation that we're looking at here, if they could not cooperate then with H2O they get to water, right? But there's other combinations of them along with other elements that make different substances, right? And, and they wouldn't be able to make those substances either. The next highest level of creation is only possible by the lower forms of creation having an affinity to a cooperation. So that tells us a lot about God's nature. He, he would like us to have a bit more cooperation with each other. And he would like us to... And, and he's basically saying, look, not only would I like it, he's saying to you, but it's actually in your interest. <laughs> because the next highest creation, the, the higher thing that you can achieve, is not going to be possible without it happening. So it's actually in your interest to actually do this cooperative have this cooperation occurring between creations. So can you see now it can satisfy higher desires as well now. So here, the two elements by themselves, not cooperating, there's no higher life form, or no higher creature or matter created. As a result, that, that higher thing is no longer is not possible. If that thing's no longer possible, then that thing can no longer satisfy a hope of higher desires. It can only satisfy what it is at the level of its combination. And if it's not combining, then it's not going to satisfy those levels. So again, that tells us something about God, that God feels that when you cooperate together and you, and you merge systems together, there is going to be a higher creation and it's going to have higher function and therefore higher positive benefits to 
the highest creation, humans. Yeah. Does that make sense, Anna? Yes. Yep. And the second part of the question is, common purpose brings more beneficial results. And you can see here that if these two didn't have the purpose, you think if you can think of hydrogen as having a purpose and oxygen as having a purpose, which they actually do, they have properties that cause them to have attractions, right? And attractions are really purposes. So if hydrogen didn't have the purpose to combine with oxygen, if it didn't have the desire to, or the, you, could, you could think of it if it was an organism, an instinct to, if it didn't have that desire to do it, then this highest thing would never be created. Right? So the purpose of each lower creation is to have a common purpose to create a next higher creation, a new higher creation. That's its purpose. Right? So that tells us something about God as well, that he feels that all creation has been created in such a way that it brings about more beneficial results by creating something with a higher purpose. Yeah. There's a lot that these things tell you about God if you really think about it. That's why it's such a fascinating subject. And that's why also in the spirit world, in the celestial heavens, this is one of the main things you'll find yourself talking about <laughs> at different times because it's just such a fascinating subject of potentials and possibilities. Yeah. How are we going time? I've got time for one more, I think. Um, I'll just check my times. I haven't got time. Oh, no, no. Yep, five more minutes. That's good. Okay, Jane, we're up to you. Where are you? Thanks, Jane. Which one? The uh, first one. Thank you, Jane. Assuming your first one is my first one. Okay. What are the abdicating? results? What are the results? Yep. What are the one. results of the human soul abdicating its role in the hierarchy of creation? and having the false belief that other creations are higher in the hierarchy. For example, human souls and animals. Yes. Now, it is impossible for the human soul to abdicate its hierarchy. It's only an illusion. Your abdication is only an illusion. It's only a giving away of your energy. The reality is, from God's perspective, hierarchy is fixed and immovable. So you are the highest of the hierarchy, whether you believe that and act like that or not. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing to remember. It's impossible for you to actually abdicate your role in hierarchy. God has already set it in stone. <laughs> the law sets it in stone, right? Mm -hmm. You have a certain role, whether you like it or not. That's how it is. Because you are the highest of the creations. So, so you cannot abdicate your role. You cannot. You, may, you, you can. You can make out you don't have it and act like you don't have it. Sure, but that. But from God's perspective, that's just you in rebellion, not abdication. You can't abdicate it because it already is assigned to you. Too bad, huh? <laughs> it's actually a good thing. <laughs> You'll learn, but but most of us think, what? You you mean I'm already this <laughs> being with its highest power? Yes, you are. No matter whether you believe it or not, you are. That's how it is. So the second part of your question is, what about you having a false belief that other creations are higher? Well, yes, obviously you can have such a belief because you, as a human soul, have will and desire and you're able to change this will and desire and as a result, you're able to abdicate power, you're able to give it away to something. So if you want to give it away to an animal, which I see many people do, actually, they let their animals, in their, you know, their pets in particular, rule their life. That's, that's you giving away your, high, your highest in hierarchy and now you're giving it away to your cat. <laughs> so your cat goes meow, 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 meow and pesters you and so you feed it when your cat wants to be fed rather than when you want it to be fed. Now I'd say a person who loves their cat would probably feed it regularly <laughs> but not on demand. You follow? Yeah. And this is where it finishes up that a lot of lower creations finish up ruling your life. Right? They do. Like, and what I've noticed is the, if a person has pets, 
in particular, the pets finish up ruling the person's life. Right? Now, why is that? It's because the higher creation is in the illusion that it's not higher and that it should serve these other lower creations. Is that not true? Yes. Yeah. And we do this all the time. We do it with disease as well. Most of you believe that disease is more powerful than you are. So that's an, another illustration of how you believe a lower creation is higher than you are. It's not higher than you are. It's actually being controlled by you. The reason for the disease is something going on within the soul. So it's actually being controlled by you. Stop believing it's higher than you are. Right. So the same goes with uh, sort of infirmities, accidents. We all believe some things are beyond our control, is what we call it. Yeah? But God's made it so that everything in this physical universe, this universe that includes the spirit world, everything within it is under the human soul's control. So that means any possible thing that could exist in this universe is under our control in some way. God's made it that way. But because we don't believe it and we don't investigate the laws by which we are able to control these things, because we don't believe it, you, you see, can you see if in our, if here we are as a soul, if in the soul's mind we believe that we don't have control, so I, so I don't have control of whatever, can you see that you won't learn about the law that gives you control? Just that belief alone precludes you from actually learning the law that may give you control. So this is, this is a big problem, this belief. And that belief means that in the end you don't investigate law. Can you see that? That belief causes you to not investigate law. Now that you haven't investigated law, can you have control? Of course you can't, because you haven't investigated how that control works. Right? But the reality is you could have a completely different belief that you do have control, you just need to find out the law, and then you'd have control. So, so this, is where, this is one of the disadvantages, if you like. It's one of the penalties of, not, of remaining ignorant, of wanting to remain ignorant. The penalty of, not, of wanting to remain ignorant is that you finish up not investigating law that can benefit you. So we get a disease, cancer or something, we don't investigate the law that created it, we don't understand it, we don't do something about it, we don't take action because we don't believe that we even have control over it, except through some physical means, and even then that's hit and miss, right? So we don't believe we have control over it. So what do we do? We give up and say, it's all beyond my control, it's just how the universe has acted to me or something. And we even get angry if we believe in God, in that case you'd probably get angry with God saying, why did God allow this to happen to me and so forth, when actually God's saying, no, 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 you have control. You are the highest of my creations, you have control. And you in particular have control over everything that happens in your body. Everything. So it's another way in which we're giving up we're, we're, we're believing in the illusion of abdication of hierarchy, but God is actually saying, no, no, you have control. The, I, cannot, I cannot suggest to you enough the importance of seeing that you are the highest creation and what that actually means for you. Because it, it means a tremendous amount when it comes to disease, sickness, illness, accidents, as well as happiness, you know, and other, and other aspects of life, relationship and everything. It means so much because you have control. Now, now, when I talked about cooperation, I wasn't suggesting that cooperation should be compromised. Because the reality is true cooperation occurs at the truth level. And the truth level is all about fundamental facts that don't compromise. Right? So this is where I see many of you in relationships 
making some fundamental mistakes in the relationship where you're making compromises but you're but you're compromising truth god's truth in the process now god's truth means if you compromise god's truth you're compromising fundamental facts and if you compromise fundamental facts there's always going to be a pain-based penalty which means there'll be a pain-based penalty in your relationship right. so it's very very important to understand some of these principles even for your own happiness in a relationship yeah but it's a good question jane thanks very much for that question thank you all right so do we get the hierarchy principle starting to sort of get that and understand how that fits in so so we can see that all the different definitions we've had and what we've talked about there with regard to the principles and we can see what what the important thing is about the principles in terms of how they work and you could likely come up now with many more examples as to how we oppose it right including the one we just discussed giving away giving away this concept that we have control that we actually are the person who controls our destiny you know this whole concept that something else indeterminate controls your future is way out of harmony with the hierarchy principle mm. good day well now we come to our lunch break so we'll have a 30 minute lunch break which will bring us to uh 5 to 2 if we can get back by 5 to 2 that would be great thanks guys <laughs> thank you